All right, all right, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know some of y'all mad with the music, man. Good job, y'all, the damn music, man. Like, fuck you. I'm bringing you fantastic damn uh, content. All right, I'm going I'm to lower the music, okay? I'm going to lower it for y'all. Damn, for y'all be on some scandalous shit. All right. It's low enough, okay? That's low enough. Hey, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Pierre Live. This is week three. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, got a hell of a week, too, boy. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Things have been happening in the comedy world. Well, the comedy world has exploded recently. I mean, it really, it's just, everyone's talking about comedians now. It's like, wow, man. For a while there, people weren't really talking about comics. Not like that. It's like, you know, Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart, Cat Williams, and Mike F. Now everybody up there, is being talked about. I love it too, boy. I love it. Um, you know, for so long, comedy has been, you know, you know, uh, yeah, it has its surge, it goes ups and downs, and uh, you know, it was kind of I can say as long as down, but uh, now people are talking about it every way. And I guess we got to give it a you know big shout out to Cat Williams for being on Shay Shay because that's kind of you know I feel like that kind of started it. All right, y'all. Let's see what we can uh, talk about. First of all, just got back from two great cities. I did Cleveland, Ohio, uh, uh, the Funny Bone. Shout out to my folks at Cleveland, Ohio for coming out, man. I really appreciated that, man. It was a good look. And just this week past, I went to uh, Detroit. I did the Punchline. Shout out to those Detroit folks, man. I really, it's kind of Southfield. Um, for my D- Detroit heads, you know, it's funny. Uh, Southfield, like the suburbs, for those who don't know. Um but it's basically Detroit. It's where Detroit Negroes who got a raise on a check for two dollars decide to move out to. So it's the same ignorant, my lovable Detroit folks uh, out there in the suburbs now, and they go to a comedy club called uh, Punchline. So shout out to the Punchline for uh, having me and the folks who came out, supported, packed it in, appreciated y'all. Y'all was fantastic, man. Thank you so much. Um, back home, um, I got a I think I, I got a I got to go on a cruise coming up next week this weekend and then i come and i back i'm in maryland um in fort washington maryland um on march 9th i think it's a saturday not sure um come holla at your boy and um then i go to atlanta on the 10th for a couple of days shooting some uh, episodes of the podcast looking forward to it i got some crazy some funny guests some cool guests and then i'll uh, on the 16th if you and no 17th if you're in philly I'm at the Met Theater, M-E-T. I'm at the Met Theater with my man Tommy Davidson, a whole bunch of comedian Damon Williams. Um, a really, really good show. A whole bunch of other guy, people. Um, so if you're in Philly area on March 17th, holla at your boy. If you're in the uh, DMV, Maryland area, Fort Washington area, um, March 9th. And, uh, you know, yeah. So uh, on the land, I'll be in the land doing my podcast. But, again, thank you all again for sh- uh, showing up again, man. All right, man. I don't know what to talk about now, man. So much stuff is happening. So much going down in the LBC. Uh, let's talk about this movie, this Tyler Perry movie, man. Let's, let's holler let's holler that for you. You know what I'm talking about. This one right here. Yeah. Oh, that's the wrong one. It's not a Tyler Perry movie. What Tyler Perry movie? Down here. We'll get to him. Uh, Tyler Perry movie. Yeah, that right there. That right there. Everybody's watching that, talking about that. Uh, kind of funny. Uh, you know, Maricopa. I saw it. I, I, yeah, okay. I've been really busy, so I haven't had a chance. To, I just got home like Monday night, so at least Tuesday. So I've been running and ripping, getting stuff in order. Y'all know I do a whole bunch of things from my podcast to my movie promotion. Um, um, you know, just so many, so many, so many things I'm doing. Working on, working on a special. So uh, I don't have much time to see everything, but I try to, you know, watch as much as I can, so I can sit here and talk to y'all about it. But uh, like I was just saying, uh, you know, just saw. Uh, probably almost 40 what it was an hour and a half movies so i probably saw an hour of it um online been on fire but that movie damn boy been on fire well one thing i'm gonna say about tyler perry look here brother i'm not supporting no more of your movies until you put a nigga in there with a receding hairline and gaining some weight you know got some weight on him man. everybody can't have a washboard stomach now and all your goddamn movie in a hairline like they 12 years old uh-uh, no sir no sir okay the gardener the mechanic the bus driver everybody take their shirt off sometime in the damn movie with the abs and shit i mean can anybody lawyers everybody's in shape in his movies and got a hairline down to here okay like old frankenstein hairline nah 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 son nah 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 tyler that's not the, the, the depicted of the real world okay Tell me y'all, you when y'all go to work or y'all on the bus or you in the grocery store, everybody ain't, ain't, ain't everybody looking like that. Mm-mm. 
And then somebody said the weeds are horrible. The haircuts or the weeds or whatever. I ain't really paying attention to that. But the sisters been getting in the in the comments about wow, them hair, them hairs, boy, them them them, them mullets and them hair, them, them them mops on their heads and stuff. I thought, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, God, man, I should know that. The girl from the the, the, the main one from the Kelly Rowland. Sorry, Kelly Rowland. I think she. I thought she looked good, but some girls clowned her, weave and stuff. Well, y'all are vicious, boy. Woo-wee. Y'all be vicious on black movies. I'm gonna keep it 100. Y'all be vicious on some black movies. I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Way harder than some white movies. Y'all will look up and down the movie. But I'm gonna say, you can say, hey, well, you did the same thing. But no, come on now. Come on now. Everybody can't have an abs, abs, a washboard, something like they just got out of LA fitness or have hairlines down the head. So does anybody got a receding hairline? And don't give me that one time they had um the old man wear uh the crazy clothes and stuff. The ball headed dude, man, that's come on. I don't come out his movies. Do his movies the lead? Is anybody you ever see anybody in his lead with a receding hairline? One time what was that um uh, Steve uh you can remember you beat beat the woman and stuff, the black ball headed dude. Um Got a brother's a movie in acting too. Steve Harris. Remember Steve Harris? All right, all right. But they even had Shamar Moore with a wig on with some braids. Supposed to be a hood dude. Come on, y'all. Come on. Who's buying that shit? Come on. Women. That's who buying women. Women love to see that. I want to see a white boy and a young hairline. Okay. The only time women in Tyler Perry's movies don't look right, they getting beat up or pushed off a plane or some shit or telling to get the hell off a plane. You know how y'all get down with it. <laughs> so, yeah, the cast director, we need to start seeing some regular folks that we can identify with. Because we can't identify, Tyler, with all them people you got, them dudes you got on as a lead man. Everybody got a young face. Shit. Mm-hmm. What's up with that? Okay. Get somebody with some cow licks and say, how about that? Okay. Oh, some of the people who are watching this, don't y'all want to see some people look like you? <laughs> come on y'all what the hell going on god damn hairline down to here and shit come on man who you fooling man but if I get, only person I know got a judge in the movie be like 21 years old okay 28 year old judge with a hairline down here you know what I'm saying got a colonel in the army and shit with a hairline down here come on man somebody I'm not hairline go back when you stress out you trying to tell me everybody every male actor on your shit all the characters don't stress yeah and then what's funny about his movies is you ever know if they always go over the top with something? Man, I'd be laughing my ass off. Say a brother's married to a, a sister and got kids, but he like a white woman. Somewhere in the movie, he's going to be like, I love me that white woman. That white woman treat me good. She treat me like I'm supposed to be treated like a man, like a king. And then the sister be like, I'm trying to do the best I can. I got two jobs. I'm a lawyer. What do you want from me? I'm raising your kids. What's wrong with you? I don't care about that. I, I The white woman is taking care of me. She's showing me love and attention. And she's buying me shit. You don't do nothing but complain and complain about the kids and about you tired of work and stuff. I'm trying to do the best I can. I love you, Tyrone. I love you. Nigga. There'll always be something like, yeah, and I'm tired of the Lord, too. Oh, my God, don't say that. You heard me. I'm tired of going to church every week. I'm tired of the Lord. Lord ain't do nothing for me. Lord ain't buy this house for me. Lord ain't get that car for me. Lord ain't get your car for me. Don't talk to you. talking blasphemy. Don't you ever go get the Lord in his house. Don't you? Well, that's why I'm getting out the house. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to buy me another house. I'm about to move across town. I don't need the Lord. And at the end, you know, shit crumbles for him. Like, Lord, God, Jesus, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I did that to you, Lord. I want you back in my life so I can help my family back. Please, Lord, please. I will never turn my back against you again. That's pretty much, you know, a couple of Tyler Perry's productions. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of Tyler Perry, you know, for what he does for the women and stuff. But a couple of times I'll be like, come on, bro. Come on. Put me in a movie. Let me show you how it's done. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, but a lot of his movies are like that. Let's be real, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, but if you uh get a chance to check it out, man, like I said, people have been hard on this damn movie. They've been hard on this movie right here, boy. I didn't see the end yet. I'm I'm at I'm at about the you know, and it tripped me out too with her. What is it about this black women that are so educated? He put some educated black women in his movies. Give them good parts. 
They do good at queen. They, 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 they lawyers or they doctors, they good wives. But as soon as a nigga take his shirt off, they're like, I, I can't, I, I'm going to, I got to cheat on my husband. I can't. That lawyer was like, come on over my, come on my spot. I think we should do business here. I know we should, but uh, I don't feel good around these people. Come to my house. Let's do this. Hey, I'm a, I'm an upstanding woman. I'm in a marriage. I'm a smart black woman. Two hours later. Ding dong. I'm just coming over here to give you the paperwork. I know. I know. I'm turned on by you. I'm feeling uncomfortable. I know. I know you. But this is the part that was written for me. I gotta be with a deep voice. And turn you on, because you're a black woman, you can't say no. It's hard to resist. A nigga without no shirt on and a full beard. Hey, down to here. <laughs> Woohoo! You know what it is. <laughs> oh man, it's funny. All right. So if you get a chance, check out uh, Tyler Perry's new movie, uh, Mira Copa. Um, you know, see what you think about it. You know, let me know in the comments what you thought about it, and we can uh, we can rock out from there. All right, man. So uh, been a crazy week about a lot of stuff. You know, been popping up. Um, let's talk about some some stuff. Uh, Corey Holcomb went off on a. Uh, well, let me take it the other way, other way around. I'm hearing uh, Donnell Rollins went off on Corey Holcomb on stage, man. And uh, I don't know. I saw the clip. That clip. Boy, I'm you. Now, I don't know how it all started. I heard this is the story. I heard that Donnell Rollins was on stage performing at the Laugh Factory, which is in Hollywood. And he got finished his act and was get coming off. And then Corey Holcomb went up there. And was talking about pe things and people and situations that kind of resembled Donnell Rollins. And Donnell Rollins took offense to it. Like, hold up, hold up. And it went to a shouting match. Um, you know. And then it went, went y'all saw, y'all saw the clip. If you didn't see the clip, go go check the clip out. Um, I don't know, man. That was uh that was strange, man. You know, I know Donnell Rollins, I've known him for years. I know Corey Holcomb too, but I know Donnell Rollins for years. Um, I personally didn't like the rebuttal that, uh, not the rebuttal, but the, the but, 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 but what Donnell, the way Donnell went about it, what he said, I don't mind shouting back and forth because you talk about me. And I feel like I just got off stage. You're like, yeah, light skin can be as corny as hell. I'm not going to just walk away and say, well, he's on stage now. And I'm turn around and say some shit too, but my shit going to be a little different. You know, and Donnell was trying to, what I never would do is was trying to, I would never try to prove to another man that don't think I'm funny, that I'm funny in a shout match. That ain't going to happen. If he says I'm mild and you know, then I'm, I'm I got to come with mine. But I ain't gonna be like I'm not mild. I'm a beast. I'm funny. Mm, that don't that don't that don't set right. Okay, I mean, you think you convinced him? You know, the crowd thought what they thought. They thought you were a beast, I guess. But going back and saying what you said to him, yeah, I am funny. I am funny. man. I ain't never gonna try to prove it on a nigga who don't think I'm funny. That I'm funny. Fuck you, nigga. Shit, if you think I ain't funny, you know. And then he hit him with the with the proverbial, "You're a provocateur, nigga. Come on." Come Man, come on, man. A provocateur. What the fuck? What last time you heard a nigga say provocateur? There was niggas looking in the books dictionary. What the fuck is provocateur? What is that? What is that? Provocateur? Come on, Ashley Larry. Nigga, if you're going to hit him with some nigga shit, fuck all that. You go what you got. You go with your guns. You bitch ass nigga. Fuck you. You whack motherfucker. You motherfucking corny nigga. Whatever. You just bring your guns. Buy that out. Fuck your bitch ass nigga. I mean, that's what I did. I mean, you can talk to me like that. I'm going to hit you with all kind of fuck you. A fuck boy. Fuck you. If a nigga talk about me, that's just what it was going to be. But I'm never going to be like, I'm funny. Fuck you. I'm a beast, nigga. You, I'm a beast. And I beast y'all. Fuck y'all. Fuck him. Fuck whoever talks shit about me. I'm going to say it right then and there. And I ain't going to use no big ass word, no provocateur. That's a little, that's a little, you might have been away from them niggas a little longer. No, niggas didn't know provocateur, you know what I'm saying? I'd hit that nigga with some straight, fuck you, bitch ass nigga. That's that's a provocateur right there. You whack motherfucker, whatever. But I'm never going to hit that motherfucker with some, um, and outsmart him and out verbalize the nigga when we talking some shit shit. If it's street shit, it's street shit, nigga. You know, it is what it is. Or, you did, you know, you did what you had to do. And then um, I think he apologized the next day. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm with the goddamn apology tour and shit. I don't know. Everybody wants to apologize. Fuck it. You said what you said. Live with it, nigga. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Stand on them ten toes, man. Um, I don't think he's a, a, a corny comedian, you know, a whack or whatever, mild and shit. Um, I've seen Ronnie, uh, Donnell Rollins get down. His get down has been real. He's been funny as hell. 
Um, so, of course, his special came out. And uh, I don't know. I'm not going to say it was a publicity stunt, but it was perfect timing. For you to say, hey, I'm a bad motherfucker. I'm a beast on stage. And then your special come out a week later. Now, you know, all the eyeballs on the special, they're going to see what they're going to see. I'm quite sure uh, Corey Hoke was going to chime in on the special. I saw half of the special. I had to run in this room and do I can't do uh, everything. I ain't got time like that, but I've, I've watched half of it. Um, was it a beast mode? No, I wouldn't say beast mode. Not at all. I wouldn't say that. But uh, he gave you some Donnell Rollins. Um, it wasn't a bad special to me. It wasn't bad. Now, if you want to say it was the greatest special of all time, don't do that. It was a good special. It was, you know, it was good. You know, I saw half of it. Um, and, uh, you know, Donnell was what Donnell does and shit. Um, but I wouldn't say it was beast. I, I don't think people are going to be reciting stuff from the, uh, the, 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 um, special. And again, this is my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you think it's a beast, it was great. When the greatest specials of all time, then more power to you, man. Um, I've seen Donnell many a times. This wasn't necessarily Donnell's top tier situation, but it wasn't whack and it wasn't corny. I can't say that. I, won't, I, ain't, I ain't going that route at all. Um, he did his thing, um, but with the pressure of it having to be a beast mode now, he got to be in beast mode. I wouldn't say he wasn't, he wasn't in beast mode. Uh, no, that, that wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that. But, you know, check him out live. And, you know, you know, it's different sometimes live when you go see somebody, you know, when they're just in Cleveland or Chicago on stage, tan their ass up. Like I said, I've seen him before. He's been uh, a beast before. And, uh, but, you know, Corey said he was mild and, um, Corey's lovers and fans and you know they're gonna go with the motherfucker and say yeah that was a mild ass performance just then um so it was what it was uh yeah 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 Corey's on a Corey's on a motherfucking witch hunt boy he, he, he shoot motherfuckers down god damn Corey um speaking of that you know going out he might have been a little more needed to I think the, I think the fight is on man this one right here popping right now god damn that's right Tasha K her ass crazy as a woo wee. She get the she get the receipts. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you know what I'm saying? She go receipt style. She say, fuck it. If you go in there, she had recorded him calling her. Um, I, I mean, I don't know how it initially initially started. Um, I guess he slammed Tasha K a while back, but I know he said that about his daughter and calling her a B and and he said, uh, daughter's gonna go on with Tasha K. And he said, I'll tell you and Tasha K basically. And I don't know if that's where it started, started from. But Tasha ain't one of the ones, you know, if you ain't got your guns loaded, she ain't going to be an easy hit. She ain't going to be no easy target right now. I'm telling you right now, she going to come with the with the smoke. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he said he for it. You know, Corey said, I'm for it right now. So now everybody say ding, 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 ding. Oh, shit. Here we go with it and stuff. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm, you know, I'd love to invite Corey to my show. We can sit down. You know, I invited him before to the panic room. Um, I just hit up Tasha um, a couple of days ago. And I think we're going to link up pretty soon. And this just happened to fall in right after that. I was like, damn, oh, shit. Um, so I've been watching Tasha just a little bit. And uh, funny girl, crazy, you know, she got some balls. I ain't going to just be real. You know, she go after whoever. Um, but I feel like we in that situation now, man. God damn. I feel like it's like more drama and more craziness is where it's happening now. You know notice that? People just want to see some drama. Some, oh, shit, it's on now. He said what? She said what? Damn. And these two are perfect for that fight. Corey Holcomb and Tasha K getting at it? Yeah. Will be no stone unturned. Fuck that. <laughs> but motherfucker got some DNA on somebody. They going to un unearth it. Corey got his team going to unearth some shit. And she got her team. So, you know, I don't know how much of a fight he wanted because this is her thing. Well, it's his thing too, but a lot of people don't Bark back at Corey. Let's be real. You know, Corey tests people up and they just be gang, 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 ain't no problem with you, Corey. You know, she ain't the one. Um, she released uh what is it, that record? I mean the record, the recording. Damn, telephone recording. Really? He said, Hey, it's saying what you want. She's like, Come on, Corey. Said, All right, you about to find out. So uh I don't know, man. By the time y'all see, well, yeah, we won't it won't be that quick, but probably by another week, you know, we'll 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 see. My whole thing is this, man. Let's keep it just on talking shit. If that's what you know, that's what we gonna go with. Because I don't want to see nobody get physically hurt, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not really that serious to do that. But is it entertaining? Well, to some people, obviously it is because you see the clicks. Some people are getting tired of it. They're like, man, enough of y'all going back and forth. Okay, well, if you click and watching it, then it ain't enough. Until you stop watching that stuff, it's going to continue. 
So you're part of the problem. To sit there and say, oh, I'm tired, I'm tired. Well, then are you watching it? If you're watching it, you're part of the problem. Okay, let's just put it that way. If you're not, then you're part of the solution of your solution. If it's, I don't want to see it. But the door has been open, man. That door has been kicked open a, a minute ago with the reality shows and all that. Was shit, probably before that with, uh, what's his, what's his name, uh, Jerry Springer and all them fools. And what was that black, What was that white guy with the brown hair? Uh, what was his name? He, he had one of them shows, too, in the beginning. Remember that around Jerry Springer time? What was that guy? Richard, Richard something. Remember him? Richard something. Y'all hit it in the comments. You know what I'm talking about. He was a wild boy, too. So all that's been started years ago. Black folks just now getting on it and, you know, with the reality shows. And now we all want to see, ooh, ee, ooh, ooh, ee, 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 ooh, ooh, ooh. And we want to see what it is. What it is. I just hope it don't get to the point where something physically happens to someone. Um, you know, then we're going to be yelling, enough of that stuff. Let's stop all this. Yeah, let's stop. Well, you helped it by watching it. So, you know, I'm cool with the shit. I just don't want the violence to happen. But if it does, it is what it is, you know. I'm just saying, if it is, you know, let's at least stop there. You know, the talking back and forth right now, you know, fuck it. It's entertaining. People laugh at some of the stuff, but just don't let it uh, cross the line. And if it crosses the line, then we'll see where we go from there. You know, will it will it pull back? Will we stop? Do y'all want it to stop? Y'all enjoying it. Let's be real. You know the people over there, fifty one fifty, enjoy it. Come on, man, they they can't, ooh, they they love it, and he's feeding it to them too. And Tasha, yeah, well, Tasha, her too. You know, she ain't got all them fans for no reason. So there's an insatiable appetite for this uh, back and forth with each other. Let's be real with that. Let's not act like we don't, you know, we surprised, you know. But uh, hopefully, it don't end in you know something ridiculous, like I said. Uh, one of the ones that started it. I didn't get a chance to watch this, but I heard this right here was off the chain. Brothers, my my homeboys said they was crying. They were almost teared up and shit. Damn. I got to watch this. I haven't seen it yet. And like I said, I will watch it, but I haven't seen it yet. But my folks, man, they said, damn. They said, wee. She looking bad. Bad. I'm thinking bad. Worse than she looked before. So she was looking bad when she was doing a show. Let's be honest. No, no, okay. When I saw her come out that ocean, with that two-piece baby suit, I said, girl, you don't you ever talk about someone again. Don't you ever talk about someone else's body again. I was saying back then, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't talking shit about people, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, woo-wee. Now, you know, she's definitely on a downslide. And they say she's looking bad, man. And people now people have the sympathy for her, which is great. Fantastic if you feel that way. I haven't seen it yet. I don't want anything bad to happen to the woman. But they say, man, she damn near death's door. Damn, she knocking on him up. Uh, 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 de- uh, uh, hello? That's what they saying. I haven't seen it, but they were like, oof. And when my homeboys say they damn near teared up, I'm like, whoa, hold up. I got to watch this, man. So, uh, so yeah, man. But see, I'm going to tell you how this how this works. You know, when she was up there yipping and yapping about people, and remember she put, uh, what's the name, on um, blast, um, um, uh, Method Man's wife on blast and some other people. Everybody like, go ahead, girl. Wendy, 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 you go. Ooh, 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 ooh. All that. Well, you know, a lot of hurt feelings was uh, brought upon that, you know, with her. She, 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 she outed a lot of people, talked a lot of shit about people. Mm-mm, girlfriend, let me get my tea. Ooh, ooh, my tea. <laughs> and all them girls and, and some of them guys in the audience. Okay, you go ahead, Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. And when her downfall hit, God damn, that was quick. You know what I'm saying? It took a while for her to get up there. For the radio, for New York radio, to Philly radio, to back to New York radio, to her TV show. And then that shit hit. Once she, once she fell over with the Liberty, Statue of Liberty outfit. People start turning their back on her. That's a, that's a, that's a perfect example of people just using you while you up. You know what I'm saying? Using you while you up. I think she had a divorce from her husband. He, he, he caused some ruckus I heard and shit. Mm-mm-mm. When you hot, they all love you. When you hot, they'll be, they'll take anything from you. Any kind of attitude, anything you do, they'll take it because you're making them money. As long as you're making Hollywood money, they'll take anything. They'll turn it back. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. But as soon as you don't make them no more money, or you, or you slipping, you out of there. Unless you've been a good person and people say, I got your back. I'm going to watch out for you. And then you see some people hang around and keep getting stuff again, even after the show is over with. Other people, you see, they gone. I think Wendy was, um, you know, unfortunately, one of the people who they were just tired of. And said, okay, you the queen of mean. 
your shows ain't doing well or your health ain't doing well. We took the show from you. They didn't even give Wendy a farewell show. That's when it's wrong. Let me tell you something. That's when they really don't give a shit about you. When they don't give you a farewell show to say goodbye. When they say your goodbye, and you know, you you're out of here. I mean, it's just horrible. I mean, look at it. I mean, damn. Another documentary on life. I, I gotta watch that, man, because that is like heavy, man. I'm like, we so Keep her in your prayers from what I'm hearing, man. You know, I never want to see somebody down like that, that bad. But um, you just got to watch what you say and what you do, man. People uh, woo, people can be funky, funky, e -e -e, funky. Now, this is somebody who ain't funky. All right. This is a, you know, black folks are just, you know, we're just some entertaining people, man. We're just entertaining. And I mean, that's from our roots. You know what I'm saying? I like it when people sometimes get mad when they see young black brothers with gold and diamonds and all that. We I mean, do all the gold and diamonds. Nigga, what do you think they were doing in Africa? Yes, the kings wore gold and a lot of jewelry. Look at the photos back then. We're used to wearing gold and jewelry and all that kind of stuff. Now, the tomfoolery of trying to kill people for it is ridiculous. But to be out there and flashy, we've been flashy since the African days, man. The colors and stuff that we wore and so forth. The jewelry. Come on, man. We've been like that. This ain't nothing new. So when you dissing these young cats from wearing all that crazy shit and all that jewels and all that, that's what we've been doing. Brothers been wearing jewels all their lives, man. The Egyptians, all them, man. Been wearing jewelry, looking good, looking flossy. All right? Been doing it for a long time. So just understand that. But um, And musically, we've hit every genre of music. I wouldn't be surprised if we started music damn straight you know i don't i don't know the history of music but you know we damn sure put our foot in damn near every type of music you know what i'm saying a lot of mu music came from black people the beats the drums and so forth they wasn't drumming in ireland and drumming in england that was africa man let's go go for uh my dmv folks yeah so you know we uh We've been with the music all the time. So it's not surprising at all that this young lady done popped up and killing the country western chart. They're like, gosh, yeah, the number one song. Like, damn, can you believe that? Yes, I can believe that. Yes, oh, damn right I can believe that she's doing that. Because she's a black woman. Okay. So she has conquered that music. She's up there. Uh, uh, uh. And now she's not the only first black person to make, you know, country western movie. This Charlie Pride. Damn near Hootie and the Blowfish dude. I forgot his name. Darius uh, Rutker. He's been on the country charts, and uh, a lot of people, you know, a couple of people have been on it. Um, but Beyonce put her foot down. Said, I'm here with the country. Now, you know you bad when you can just, go, just just start up on a genre of music and have the number one record, well, probably go number one album. Damn. You was a bad some. That just shows we some bad folks. What's it? What's next for uh, Beyonce? Opera? You, you hit some opera, um, um, Beyonce? What? <laughs> I say, oh, I don't know how to do opera, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. She can damn it, take the charts on a lot of stuff. Um, I can see her doing a rock song, yeah, like big rock, you know what I'm saying, and uh, conquer that. People love some Beyonce, man. Some Beyonce, they love her, man. Um, I would say this I'm about to say some blasphemy stuff, you're gonna put it in the comments, but she's a modern day Michael Jackson. I mean, with the impact she has, the worldwide impact. When you see her shows, man, foreign country, people out there crying. I ain't saying she performs like him, but she has the impact. Like, she's like the number one artist that people will pay big time money to go see. Who's bigger than her? I mean, you're going to say Taylor Swift. I hear you, but is Taylor Swift that big overseas, too? Like, is she in China doing me? People, oh, we love you, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, we love you, Taylor Swift. Oh, I love her, Taylor Swift. She's good. Is that happening over there? I don't know. But, you know, Beyonce go around the country. People, oh, my God, they, they lose it for her. So, you know, I think she's a modern day um, Michael Jackson as far as the impact on it. Um, so, wow. So shout out to uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z. You know, I guess he uh, is he going to is he going to uh, rap country? Is he going to try to do uh, outdo what's homeboy name? Um, God, see the name. The boy, Aki, not Aki break, you, you know, the. The gay guy that, 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 that you know, the gay guy was what, the name that they came out with the old town road, the old town, I don't know, whatever. Y'all know, put in the comments. I don't remember everybody's name. You know, he had number one hit, damn near to go on the country chart. So, um, uh, you know, uh, well, whatever means rapping. Um, maybe Jay Z might try next. You know, we never know. You know, 
Jay-Z done did everything under the sun. If you call, if you don't believe me, ask uh, his boy. Um, why am I? Why am I? I'm getting old, man. Like, like I, I don't know. I'm getting old. I, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. Kill me in the comments. I don't give a damn. Okay. Um, uh, what's his boy from Rockefeller? Jesus Christ, man. I don't know. <laughs> All right, y'all. But you know what I'm saying. Ask him uh, um, how he feel about it. I'm going to tell you something I feel about something. I ain't talking about feeling something. I feel like everybody wants to be a comedian now. Everybody named Mama want to do stand-up comedy. You're treating stand-up comedy like a hoe. You know, you want to spend a little time with him. When you're done, we kick it to the curb. Man, comedy something got to be in your soul to me, man. It's got to be in your soul, man. Okay? You got to live and breathe this thing to me. Okay? Just like being a good rapper. I think you got to live and breathe that thing, man. This ain't, you know, comedy is something you can just touch, man, when you feel like it. You know, my man Mike Hill over there. He is a comedian now. Yes, him. He's trying stand-up comedy too, man. Everybody's joining the bandwagon, man. So he's up there doing his thizzle with the comedy. Um, uh, who, who else? Who else? Um, I asked a list of people, man, to see who all is trying to do comedy. And they gave me a whole... Darius McCrary is coming from... Mm-hmm. Yeah, Darius McCrary. He... He's trying comedy right now from Family Matters, if you don't remember him. Uh, T.I. is trying comedy. Who else they showed me up here, man? They showed me so many people. NeNe Leakes, remember her? She's trying to do comedy. Yeah, NeNe Leakes is trying to do comedy. I'm like that. Somebody said Rowdy, Rod, Rowdy, Rod, Rodney, Rowdy, Rodney Pop. Whatever his name, Rowdy, Roddy Piper, the wrestler. He trying to do it. They said Ed Lover tried to do some stand-up comedy. I'm like, remember when, uh, who tried it? Will Smith tried to do some comedy, man. Good Lord. Is everybody named Mama trying to do that name? Um, I already said Tasha K. You already did it. Somebody, somebody said Mike Tyson trying, man. I mean, what's up with that? How y'all feel about that? Everybody just trying to do it. Somebody said Charlie Sheen trying to do the damn thing. I'm like, wow. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else y'all know? Put put in the comments. Who else y'all know? Had uh, Carl Payne for Martin is doing stand up comedy. I mean, holy sh. Jesus Christ, man. People hitting me up, uh, telling me. Somebody said, Tank driving? I don't think Tank driving. No, damn. Y'all y'all crazy and shit in here. In my comments on my, um, what's the name? But yeah, man. Everybody is trying. Big Baby from the Boston Celtics. What? He's trying. Channing Crowder trying. Come on, y'all. Is this, is this real shit right here, man? Is everybody trying? What y'all feel about everybody trying to do stand-up comedy, huh? I say this, man. I don't mind them trying, you know, I mean, getting into it, but get into it and really try to work it out. Really, don't just try it like it's so, so fun to do. This is some real shit. Because what you're doing, some of y'all are clogging up the comedy club thing. They, of course, they want to see you because you a star of a movie or a TV show. You a sports figure. And so you get a weekend at a comedy club, which is kicking out a real talented comp stand up comic. These club owners don't give a damn. They just want that money. The bottom line is the money. And I get it. Okay, so and so comic, real comic A, don't sell out the room, and comedian or actor—I mean, I can be actor, hip hop artist, or whatever—sells it out. I get that. It's a business. But um, you know, I like something that Country Wayne said one time to me. He said, "Man, P, when I started doing, um, trying to get into stand-up comedy after I put out these little, those, those little uh, videos and stuff, he said people were calling me left and right, wanting me to do stand-up comedy." And he said, uh, he said no to him. They were offering him five thousand dollars at the time. It's a lot of money, you know, starting off with your first couple of gigs. He said, because I didn't feel like I was ready. Just didn't feel like I was ready at the time. He said, so I told him no. Because you can watch on my podcast. He said, I'm on my he came on my show twice the first time. He said, No, nah, man, I just turned it down, man. I just wasn't ready for it. And I didn't want to take that money and not be ready for it. I gotta respect that. That's that's mad love. Now, some of y'all might say, he still ain't ready. Well, but I saw him. I, I think he's funny. He's, he's doing his thing now. Um, um, quite way, quite sure much funnier than he was when he first started out. But some of these other cats, like they working out on stage. That's they workout time. Let me let me try some of these jokes instead of knocking at comedy cl- in, in, in the comedy club. Now shout out to Ti. I heard Mike Hill too. But they're going to comedy club. I mean, they're going to in, like open mic nights, working out on their rut- routine. I can respect that. That's how we all came up. But some of these other cats who just because they famous, they grabbing the mic. And just going to do some jokes. And y'all sitting there like, uh. But I blame some of y'all, too. If you know this dude ain't no damn comedian. And he's just, you know, cool guy or whatever. You like him in a movie or a sitcom or rapping or whatever you say, uh, sports. And you go watch him do stand-up comedy. 
and you disappointed and what was you expecting he or she just started I'm like, oh, you know, okay i'm gonna say this to me just to me to be a solid good comic you need at least five years of stand-up comedy at least five years of hitting the road doing it to become because you got to really feel you find yourself first that's one of the things people don't realize it's not the jokes it's finding your personality on stage and who you are okay that's the first you got to get you know you got to get to find out who you are you're not you're not just being silly man but who you are your point of view how you think of life not just spewing words out and once and some people take a long time to find themselves they you know they're doing stand-up comedy for some years before they find out who they are and once you find who you are you feel free to say what you want and now you have a way to structure jokes because jokes should be structured should have a beginning, middle, and an end, and a punchline. Not just, you know, you shouting or flipping or dancing or whatever and shit. That's the punchline and all, you know, whatever. Um, so to me, I love seeing real comedians do real work, put that work in. Not just being on stage ranting and talking mad. Uh, 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 you know, unless it's funny. Unless it has punchlines. If it has punchlines, it's cool. But just talking. I see some of these comics now, some of these young, especially the black ones. Um, you know, they do like a lot of these white comics do, just standing still. He's like, yeah, man. You ever, uh, you know, you ever, you ever like been driving to work? And then, you know, your, like your gas light come on and you driving and stuff. And uh, your homeboy is looking at the gas light and you driving. And you can tell he looking. You looking at him and he looking and you looking at him as he looking at the gas light. And um, you know, you want to say something. But you know your car. You know, you know, it's your car. So you know how long the light can stay on before you really run out of gas. Now he nervous. And you look at him, he looking at the gas line. And then you say, yo, man, what's up with you? He's like, man, the gas light been on for a couple of miles. I know my car. I know my car. And y'all driving down the street a little further. You get a little further. He's still looking. You like, ah, damn, this man, they don't look at my damn light. Bro, I got this, man. I'm just, I know, I see. I'm just looking. I'm just looking. You drive down a little further, and then all of a sudden you see him look again. You say, fuck it, man. And then you pull over. You get you some gas. But you get just enough gas to turn the light off. You know what I'm saying? You put $2 in. You turn the light off. Like, oh, you happy now? You you stress you stress uh, relief now? I put the light, got the light turned on, and now you drive down the G. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Give me some fire. Give me some fire. I don't want no mild. I don't want no medium. I want that hot, spicy shit. That's what I try to bring when I do stand-up comedy. For those of y'all see me do comedy live, holler at your boy. Get in the comments. Say what you want to say, but I try to bring it. You know what I'm saying? Even as a veteran that I am now, when I perform, I try to bring it. I don't care if it's a small crowd, a medium crowd, a large crowd. Yes. Have I hit a home run every time? No. I mean, come on now. Even when you fucking at home. I mean, you, fucking, you, ain't, you ain't knocked the button out. You know, women don't not tan the dick up. You know what I'm saying? Every time. Majority of the time, maybe. And that's what I try to do. I'll never mail it in, man, because you guys paid money to see me and I have to give y'all a show. So I always come with the attitude. I got to rock it. I don't care if it's a small crowd, like I say, or a large crowd. I got to bring it. It ain't about the crowd size. So I don't give a damn about that. But uh, like I said, a lot of comics are trying to get into this comedy right now. I'm like, okay, then. So, you know, we'll see. You know, it's going to be what it's going to be. I got, you know, man. Um, uh, speaking of some stuff that's been successful, I really appreciate it. Y'all supported my movie. That's right. That's right. It's kicking butt over at Tubi, man. So thanks to those people who already saw it, who saw it. I really appreciate y'all who came and saw my movie, man. Uh, watching it. Slice. It's the first one. I got one, two, and three. Part two is coming and part three is coming. You know, the first one, we know we did our thing. You know, the first one, you know, you know, in nine days to shoot this thing. So each one got better. I promise you, if you watch part two, it's better than part one. But part one was cool. You know, it's funny. That's, that's the parts in it. Like, okay, all right. You know, because let me tell you something. Sitting down for an hour and a half, you can sit down for an hour and a half and watch a great movie. And it can be low budget or big budget. It shouldn't be about the budget. Shit, some people didn't like Maricopa. And that was a way more expensive movie than mine. And people like my movie over that. So, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how big the budget is or whatever. You sit down for an hour and a half. You want to be entertained. You want to laugh. You want to have a good time. And I think with my movie, out of an hour and a half, an hour, you're going to be entertained. The other half hour is going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> so for those who already seen it, thank you so much for supporting. I really, really, really appreciate that, man. Um, that's, a, you know, you know, that's, that's, that's a real good look. I really appreciate it, man. Um, you know, we, we doing what we're doing, man, out here. 
Um, something hit me up. So I was thinking about something, man, that that uh kind of bothered me, man, that I noticed recently, man. I was like, oh shit. And let me see what it is. Uh I thought I had I thought I brought it over, but I didn't bring it over. Um, real quick. Um, this is off the you know, same as subject. You know, I'm here at my home. I'm blessed enough to have a home. Um, but you know, man, right now, boy, I tell you, we, we going through it, man. The housing market is ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. Can I say it one more time? Ridiculous, man. I really feel for those, man, who, who don't. If you have a house, man, you hold on to that sucker, man. You hold on to that sucker as hard as your behind can, man. Because, man, this shit is, this shit is, it's outrageous, man. It's outrageous. It used to be a goal when I was growing up that you wanted to have a house. You get what I'm saying? That was your thing, man. You know, home ownership was 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 the thing, man. But now, man, with the price is soaring, man, this shit is absolutely ridiculous. Look at this, man. Just look at how that is, man. Damn. Ain't that crazy, man? And a couple of years, someone told me, man, somebody told me that between, even in the last three years, houses went up 135%. They said something like, let me think how, how I was there. They were saying in 2022, in 2020, I'm sorry, you could get a house, a medium house for like $256,000. $256, and you had to make $50,000 to qualify. Now, a house costs six forty, dollars like six forty six or something like that, a medium house. And you got to have $105,000 to qualify. Come on, y'all. Who is doing this, man? I mean, the, the 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 goal of most people is to get a good job and a home and a family. If you can't get a home no more, and then they're kicking people's butt with the rent. Try to rent some stuff in a major city. Shit. Go to L.A. and get a rent. Try to get a rent. This room here would probably cost you $2,500 a month. And this is a room. I've seen the prices in New York City, $3,600. And you got to use the bathroom down the hallway in the shower. Come on, y'all. Who, who doing that to us, man? Wow, wow, man. And then, and then they're taking jobs overseas. So how are you going to make $105,000? Man, this is a bullshit, man. So I feel y'all, man. For those who out there, man, um, keep trying, man. You know, I man, I just feel this shit got to crash. This shit going to crash. Shit going to crash. Fuck it. I'm going to be all right when it crashes. When the market crash come back down where people can buy something, man. Ridiculous, man. They said the interest rates are going to start hitting down in um, the head of the Fed said in May, in May. He said he could, he told me, I could bring it down now, but we're not out there. You know, we, we, we're good. We're doing really good now, but I just want to make sure we got a little extra before we do it. So they're going to wait till May to bring down some interest rates, but man, it ain't going to probably be nothing that people can really mess with, man, until it gets serious, you know? So I feel for those who want to own homes, man, and, you know, people who have houses. It, it might be almost cheaper to rent a house. I mean, just saying, I mean, it's still going to be a lot, but it's in the apartment, $2,500, $2,600 for a two bedroom or one bedroom. You might be able to get a house for that, you know? So, yeah, if you got a house out there and you're lucky enough to own a home, man, you hold on to it. I don't care if it's old. I don't know if your grandmother's house. You hold on to that sucker. Everybody showing you on your know, new, brand new houses and new houses. Yeah, they dollars $650,000, $800,000. I talked to a friend of mine in California. They were like, man, I got a deal on my house. How much was it? $542,000. $542,000. That's a deal, my nigga? A deal? Man, shit. Well, when I was lucky enough, my father passed his house down to me with a little bit of a mortgage, but I went up and fixing it up. All my family was like, not all my family, but some people in my family were like, you should sell it, man. Don't sell it. Man, you crazy. Shit. First of all, I promised my father I'll fix it up. Second of all, I promised my father I'll fix it up. Second of all, I promised my father I'll fix it up. Second of all, I promised my father I'll fix it up. Second of all, I promised my father I'll fix it up. First of all, I promised my father I'll fix it up. If you want to see how I fix it up, go to my, um, my, uh, my, my, my YouTube channel comic pierre c-o-m-i-c p-i-e-r-r-e comic pierre and look it up uh, and scroll down and show you how i fix it up i took it yes and i i promised my father that i was gonna fix this house up i was trying to do it when he was alive but he, you know oh folks i like this i like this wooden panel on this red carpet really okay these old ass uh cabinets all right pops so when he passed i told myself and i'm a carpenter so i can get down and i got me i hired me a uh, contractor but me and him i did stuff i could do myself and when I, I needed help with him, he did it. We we fixed this from the rooter to the tutor. Got my homeboy, all you know, to fix the roof and shit. New brand new roof. What well, you see? Just go online. Just go to my page and see it. Go to the last one, and you'll see how I fixed up the house. Um, but no, man, if you if you have a chance to get a house, 
I really can afford it. Get it, man. Don't let, but I don't get one you can't afford. People trying to show off. I got me. I know how. I got the keys. And, you know, two years later, they stop struggling and stressing out and shit because some of these jobs ain't keeping people around no more, man. They're getting rid of people, man. And I feel bad for those people, too. That's why I'm glad I've been an entrepreneur since 1993. One more time. I haven't, I haven't had a day job. I ain't worked for nobody since 1993. It's been some ups and downs, but I stuck in it and I'm here and I'm a lot better place now than I've ever been before. This is one of my greatest times. I thank you guys for watching my my shows and stuff on my podcast or come and see my, me do stand up comedy. That's why I'm never rotten to people, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you're rotten to me, it's something different. But if you come to me with a smile, want to take a picture or whatever, ask anybody who's seen me. Get in the comments and see what time it is. Now, I might be some knucklehead one try stars. Me, you was horrible when I would tell me the date, the city, and all that, nigga. And just be real. Because I don't do that, man. Because I don't feel I'm any better than the next person. We just got different jobs. So anybody had an encounter with me, know what time it is. Put it in the comments and let me know. And I'll read the comments and see what it is, man. So, yeah, that was uh, – so the housing market, man, oh, man, uh, you know, it's getting out of hand, y'all. Don't 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 think you're going to struggle by yourself, man. It's getting out of hand, man. And um, if you can find one – and if you're cool with living in an apartment or whatever, that's fine too. But if you want home ownership, man, right now – I don't know. I don't think it's the time. I know some realtors are going to be in there. Yes, it is. It's a time. You get this, get that, get that. Yeah, but it, it was a lot easier a couple of years ago. Let's be real, you know. So it is what it is at this point right now, man. Um, all right. So uh, let me see. On this this week's of my of uh, Pierre's Panic Room, I got my man head cracked. Very funny, dude. Y'all know him from Dish Nation. He was Ricky Smiley's with Ricky Smiley um, as a sidekick or whatever. Very funny guy. I was on the uh, the Morning Hustle show when he left off of that. We talk about all that kind of stuff. Good brother. Funny. Really actually funny, man. You got some fast comebacks, man. Really fast come. Check out Wednesday, the, the, um, this week. Wednesday's um, Dish Nation. He's supposed to be rocking the shirt. Uh, Pierre's Panic Room shirt on it. Shout out to him. He's supposed to be rocking the Pierre Panic shirt. Panic Room shirt. You know what I'm saying? I love whenever my fans do that. I'm going to start selling them again. I'll sell them one time only because I normally just give them to my guests. Um... Um, if you want to cop one, come come get one. Um, I'm only I don't sell them all the time. I, I get a batch. This is my second time in like a year to sell them. If you want to get a PS Panic Room T-shirt, come on get it. Um, when I announce it, I'll start announcing it. Um, I'm so cool. I try to give you a size too. So I got a whole. I got them from small to triple X. You know. Um, but get it quickly while it's there, and cop it, and I'll mail it out to you. I'll personally mail it out to you, and. Um, you know, give you the size and just rock and show, take a picture of it, not post it. If you take a picture of it, all right, y'all. Again, man, I am so appreciative that y'all watch this right here, man. I'm trying something new, you know, get stuff off my chest. Everyone else has a, a podcast, one on one. Why can't I talk about some shit? You know what I'm saying? And um, we're gonna do this again. Uh, again, watch that uh, my podcast this week. Uh, let me show a little clip of it. Uh, real quick. So you do a lot of world traveling. That is dope. I grew up in Europe and I travel. I've traveled okay. you know, and my career has got me all over the world. Um, let let the average person who stays in their community and don't go far, you know, understand the importance of traveling. Yo, the world is bigger than your block. Mm -hmm. If you have never left your zip code, mm -hmm. do it. Like yeah. the world is lit. Some of it is actually on fire, but the rest of the world <laughs> is lit. Like you gotta travel. If you never like, left St. Louis, right. Right. go to Illinois, mm. in, or maybe further. Right. Um, a little further, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. if you've never been to like a coast with a beach on it, right. go through. Like, cause sometimes you can just drive someplace sure. fly, sure. you know. Sure. And it's it's just important to understand that the world doesn't surround or you know doesn't revolve well, around the, you, the right. bubble that you live in true that you know true that. and everybody moved differently have you ever been to tokyo not no no i've been to tokyo i made my first trip to tokyo something else i would have never had time to do if i was on the radio right and the I way heard. people move out there I they three years in the future and i ain't even talk about technology i heard the, the respect level i heard everybody does their job at the highest level and it's a clean ass country as in every place there has a bidet what is that? I heard of it. Let me get this right. Let me get because I heard of it today. I never been in. Been. So you, you you sit down and you do number two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So take me through the steps. So you you do, you do, you do number two. Mm -hmm. 
do you wipe yourself first or you or you hit a button first? What's hit the button that? first. Okay, so so, so let me right. So there's a button that splashes water up. It, it, it splashes weird because it makes okay, it seem like it's okay, flicking okay. at you. It shoots it. That's, it shoots not, it. that's not effective. Okay, it shoots in your, it shoots up your ass. Imagine uh, like a civil rights hose, but smaller. Really? Okay. <laughs> like free that last, kind of force. Okay, that kind of force, right? Okay. Smaller, and it's just handling the area that it needs to handle. But, and a good one will have a thing where you could like say if you got a wide ass, right. like maybe you gotta like aim right. the, aim the nozzle that's different. That's what I'm trying to say. And you can hit the button and it'll move it around. Like, they got them at Costco. I got two in my house. Well, 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 hold on, hold on. So you got to sit your ass in the right position, you know. And no, well, it's the normal position. Okay, you sit down. And that know where your butthole is at? That, 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 that sprinkler? Well, you got to get that toilet acclimated to, you know, your whole situation. But, but, when, you, but when you know, hold on. When you're traveling over to Tokyo, they don't know your ass. Um, I think I probably have, like, a default ass. So whatever <laughs> setting it was on <laughs> when I got there, it, it worked. Right. And, and if, and if, it's, if it's spraying your taint, then you need to move a little bit. You know okay, okay. <laughs> let me get this together. I just, I, I'm just, I've heard of it. You're the first person I've actually sat, sat down and talked to him about. This is going to be a clip, too. This we are that comfortable. Clip. Yeah, we really are. You're my boy. Come on. So... It squirts up in your head. You, you got to make sure it don't go between your leg, your ball sack, and you, know, right? you don't want to miss it. Because you don't want that, like, hell no, nah, little ass. Headshot. Right. Like, like uh, right, nah. right, right. So you, you make sure it hits your booty hole. Okay, after it's done shot up, how long does it take? 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or you enjoy it as long as you want it's to It's weird. So the ones over there, you got to hit stop. Mine has hell a timer. Hell no. So I'm in a sushi spot, right? And, like, I hit the button, and I'm just chilling, and I'm like, this is gone on too long. Like the water turned cold <laughs> after a while. And I was like, oh, snap. All right, cool. Me, you might enjoy it too let much. Let me put it into this madness. Oh, no, I was getting confused after one point in time. And I had an edible earlier too, so time is just weird anyway, okay, right? All right. We'll and use that like, excuse. No, like time be weird. <laughs> the people watching it. The, when you want an edible, like 60 minutes ain't 60 minutes. Right, right, right. Okay, um, okay. But yeah, then when the water got cold, I was like, it's time for me to stop this madness. And I looked for the little stop button. And right, I didn't stop. And right. I, yeah. and, and then you wipe. But that, at that point, you should be, that's a lot of wiping because water's all over the place, right? Am I mistaken? It's weird, right? Because of, you know how like when you go to the carnival and there's that gun that shoots the water in the clown's mouth? Yes. It's a very potent, but yet, very really detailed thing. That's how I was able to shoot the water in the clown's mouth. Wow. So, oh, oh, you good at that? So okay. it's not like mop. It's not like a swamp when okay. it's done. Okay. It's like the Lee Harvey Oswald of shooting shit. Hell Literally. Nah. <laughs> all right, all right. So then you, you sit there for like let's say ten seconds, fifteen. I, mean, I don't know the seconds. What you need? Let's go twenty. Cause God damn, twenty seconds. Ooh, wait. Uh, okay, so twenty seconds, and then you at that point you just wipe up everything, and then that, you should be good to go, right? Yeah. Wow. And every toilet in Japan, every single one at a gas station, sushi spot, airport. Um, wow. Yeah, that was funny. It, it, that was a good interview. If y'all get a chance to see it, uh, the full interview comes out Thursday um, on Pierre's Panic Room. Very funny guy, man. I like him. He, he was hilarious to me. And quick quitted too. Quick, quick witted and open. Um, check him on Dish Nation tomorrow. Uh, well, to Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. And, uh, you know, see him rocking the shirt. He said he's going to do it. Um, so that's cool. But again, man, thank y'all so much, man. You know, you can always hit me at Comic Pierre, C O M I C P I E R R E. So today I'm trying to navigate through this picture and putting the pictures up. We're going to get better with it. You know, I'm, I'm new. I'm doing it myself. I'm an old head, so I'm not used to all that. So I'm trying to learn how to do it, make it entertaining. Hopefully, this last, uh, you know, less than an hour was entertaining for you guys. Um, I enjoy being here and talking this stuff, man. I hope y'all got y'all laughs on, got some insights. Um, Again, I'm so appreciative that y'all watch it, man. Um, put it in the comments. Put whatever you want to say in the comments. We're here for it, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, the trolls, try to stay the best you can out of it. If you don't like the show, don't like me, then what are you even here for, man? You know, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't get that. That's that's really a waste of time to come in and some, you know, watch somebody's show all the time. and be like, I don't like you. Like, okay, I'm tired of you always talking. It's like, why do you watch it? It's, it so speaks more volumes of you than me. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who does that? But again, um, Love y'all, man. Appreciate y'all, man. And thank you. And we're going to work on this music, man. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get the music y'all want, man. I promise you. You know, I know y'all hear it. <laughs> and we'll get some more music. I guess I'm, I'm listening for some more beats, man. And we'll keep doing that. All right, y'all, man. Again, appreciate it. Be safe out there. And let's do this, man.